So there's a lot of these things in here. Again, I will provide all these links for you, but you can go in here. Like this is the one on just litmus test uh, questions here. So for those of you like uh, me, who's meteorology and climate connected, uh, professor of synoptic meteorology, diversity statements were requested of all applicants and were considered a crucial part of the evaluation. So you can actually go in here and see it yourself. Hello, I'm back. Uh, hope you all had a lovely Thanksgiving. Um, when things happened, a fair number of things, uh, happened, uh, and published while I was gone. Um, as you all, if you're aware with, um, this particular channel, I am no fan of DEI statements as they seem far more to be about ideological litmus tests than they seem to be about anything else, however well-intentioned. Um, and so it, it's always interesting to me, and frankly, ideological litmus tests have no place when you're talking about academia, because you do need a wide range of perspectives to help you get at the truth. That's a whole other thing. But um, <clears throat> John Saylor has actually been looking at this a lot with respect to universities and so published while I was away uh, this piece in the Wall Street Journal inside Ohio State's DEI factory, um, where he apparently got through a Freedom of Information Act request. Uh, a lot of diversity faculty rep recruitment reports from Ohio State University now, I'm not going to look at the reports themselves because there's actually a lot of them. And if you're following John Saylor's Twitter account, um, you would notice that uh, he is continuing to publish stuff, lots of stuff um, from it on the NAS uh, website, the National Academy of Scholars, webs uh, National Association of Scholars, excuse me, website um, on a frequent basis. So it is worth it to go have a look and judge for yourself. Um, as always, go ahead and judge for yourself. I can only give my opinion on what I think on these things, um, at times, um, along with some evidentiary related things. But anyway, <clears throat> the Wall Street Journal article, and you know, as you can see here, DEI litmus tests, the rubrics, contributions and practice. And I think this one just came recently. Yeah, this one just came very recently. Uh, racial preferences. So... Um, I will include all of these, of course, in the description for you, but, um, <clears throat> a search committee seeking a professor of military history rejected one applicant, quote, because his diversity statement demonstrated poor understanding of diversity and inclusion issues. Another committee noted that an applicant to be professor of nuclear physics could understand the plight of minorities in academia because he was married to an immigrant in Texas in the age of Trump neither of which is actually relevant for the things that they are studying as professors. <clears throat> These examples come from more than 800 pages of diversity faculty recruitment reports at Ohio State University, which I obtained through a public records request. Until recently, Ohio State's College of Arts and Sciences required each search committee to create such a report, which had been approved by various deans before finalists for a job were interviewed. In February 2021, then-President Christina Johnson launched an initiative to hire 50 professors whose work focused on race and social equity and 100 underrepresented and BIPOC hires. The acronym stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color. These reports show that higher education's outsized investment in diversity, equity, and inclusion shows what higher education's outsized investment in DEI looks like in practice. Ohio State sacrificed both academic freedom and scholarly excellence for the sake of a narrowly construed vision of diversity. <clears throat> Each report required, so required search committees to describe how their proposed finalists, quote, would amplify the values of diversity, inclusion, and innovation. Interesting. Some reports were dutiful and bureaucratic. Others exuded enthusiasm. All were revealing. Racial diversity was touted as a tool to achieve viewpoint diversity, but viewpoint conformity often served as a tool to meet de facto quotas. One report said a candidate, quote, would greatly enhance our engagement with queer theory outside of the Western epistemological approaches, which would greatly support us both in recruitment and retention of diverse graduate populations. Yeah. Other committees valued political ideology as an end in itself. In a search for a professor of chemistry, the report notes that one candidate's, quote, experiences as a queer neurodivergent Latinx woman in STEM has provided her with an important motivation to expand DEI efforts 
beyond representation and instead towards social justice. What is the woman's expertise in chemistry? Or what is this person's expertise? No, woman, never mind. What is this woman's expertise in chemistry? That's what I would want to know and actually care about. Are they doing innovative things in chemistry, not in social justice? Activism really doesn't have a whole lot of place here, I don't think. But anyway, another report concedes that, quote, as a white male, one proposed finalist does not outwardly present as a diversity candidate. In his defense, it notes that he recently published on critical race theory. This is for chemistry. Uh, the reports required search committees to describe how they evaluated diversity statements. The committee cited those statements as the sole reason for eliminating certain candidates in fields as varied as aquatic ecology, lighting design, military history, and music theory. In some cases, committees evaluated diversity statements through an explicitly ideological lens. A committee searching for a prof professor of freshwater biology selected finalists based upon a weighted rubric, rubric of 67% research and 33% contribution to DEI. Now, I actually did look a little bit more at this one. The initial search also included a 20% contribution to DEI. I did find that one in the collection of reports. And like I said, through the links I will provide you, you'll be able to go read them all yourself, and I encourage it. To evaluate the statements, the committee used a rubric that cited several problematic approaches for which candidates can receive a zero score. For example, if he solely acknowledges that racism, classism, etc. are issues in the academy, it isn't enough for a freshwater biologist to believe that racism pervades higher education. In other words, if you believe the same even, but you're not doing what they want you, what, what is, take out whether or not you believe differently about certain things. If you don't think the same and are doing things the same as them, you score zero. The rubric, meanwhile, gave a high score for DEI-focused activism outside act academia for demonstrating an understanding of intersectionality, for embracing a vision of anti-racism that requires consistent and long-term growth, reflection, and engagement, and that they are prepared to put this in, the, in, put in this work. Viewpoint discrimination aside, these assessments reveal an issue of basic priority. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the one thing in priority. I don't really care what you do outside of academia with DEI-focused academia. For an academic position, I really don't care. That's not relevant to a job in chemistry. Not relevant to a job in physics. Not relevant to a job in any of the physical sciences. Viewpoint discrimination aside, these... For a search in astrophysics, the DEI statement was given equal weight to the research and teaching statements. This would strike many as a poor metric for judging astrophysics. Astrophysicists. Yeah. Yeah. A university spokesman told me that Ohio State updated its hiring practices in April to exclude the use of required diversity statements except when mandated by federal law, research contracts, and licensure or accreditation. That is something to watch for, to be honest. Candidates' demographics also appeared to play a significant role in faculty hiring decisions. Throughout the reports, references to the race and sex of the candidates abound. Many of the candidates, job candidates' diversity statements emphasize their own intersectional identities. Quote, a person of color and a member of the LGBTQ community. Quote, a fat, first-generation fat, queer, scholar of color, and so on. Things that are irrelevant. to sciences. Things that are irrelevant for sciences. Again, just to make the note. The emphasis seemed to have an effect, sometimes a remarkable one, on the demographic makeup of proposed finalists. In his email, the Ohio State spokesman said that colleges in the system now use standardized evaluation tools to assess job candidates without regard to demographic character categories like race, sex, and ethnicity. That's what the law requires even more clearly since the Supreme Court decided students for fair admissions versus Harvard in June. For those of you who may not be familiar, that is the affirmative action case. That is where the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action. Some search committees, committee, committees, committees, some search committees at Ohio State were surprisingly forthcoming about their use of racial preferences. 
Diversity and inclusion featured prominently in our discussions, wrote one committee in the Division of Geodetic Sciences. Naturally, most weight was given to candidates from ERM, which is underrepresented minority, underrepresented backgrounds, but we also gave considerable weight to diversity statements that were provided by all candidates. One faculty position advertised last year was in French and Francophone studies with a specialization in Black France. Whatever the heck that means. It yielded a more racially diverse but still majority white applicant pool. The committee was adamant about its intended outcome. In our deliberate quote, in our deliberations to select finalists, the importance of bringing black scholars to campus was deemed to be essential. We thus chose three black candidates. Uh, it added, we decided as a committee that, quote, we decided as a committee that diversity was just as important as perceived merit as we made our selections. Ohio's flagship university is heavily invested, is Ohio's flagship university invested heavily in DEI with an emphasis on faculty hiring. The result of that investment should be a wake-up call for Ohio citizens and lawmakers and a cautionary tale for anyone who cares about higher education. Yeah. That would be one thing for sure. You would hope they would care more about that, but um, it's fascinating to see here. So um, so there's a lot of these things in here. Again, I will provide all these links for you, but you can go in here. Like this is the one on just litmus test uh, questions here. So for those of you like uh, me, who's meteorology and climate connected, uh, professor of synoptic meteorology, diversity statements were request of all applicants and were considered a crucial part of the evaluation. So you can actually... Go in here and see it yourself. I'm just showing this one as an example and go take a look through um, in terms of some of the things they um... <sighs> Yep. Yep. So this is a uh, stuff to go look through if you like it there, but um... I think, I think you all know, um, if you've been watching long enough, where I line up on these particular things in that, um, in that I view these litmus tests, DEI statements as ideological litmus tests that have no place in, um, in these particular, um, in, in the hiring of academics in particular, I, I, committee used a rubric developed by somehow or ideology. Yeah. <laughs> These things have no place in deciding scientists. They have no place in deciding faculty positions or awarding funding or anything along that line. And they should never be used. Um, if you're screening for someone's ideological beliefs on something that has nothing to do with their profession, um, or very little to do with their profession or is more about what they do outside of work, which you do you, whatever, um, it's irrelevant. So it's not, um, I'm not surprised necessarily to see this kind of stuff, but it's um, annoying for sure. It doesn't belong. Um, anyway, short video to start things off. Um, hopefully get to the longer piece because I did see the article about uh, the censorship of science, which I hope to get to this week too, if not this week, next week for sure. But anyway, I'm back for now um, until Christmas anyway. Um, and I want to know what y'all think. Uh, what do you think of all of this kind of stuff? Um, if you like this video, hit the like button when you're right at the door, comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, all that lovely good jazz. Until next time, I'm Adrian. May you stay curious.